Judicial Watch is suing the Justice Department for records about meetings between a law firm working with the Clinton campaign and former FBI General Counsel James Baker. This comes after the DOJ failed to respond to the Watchdog Group's Freedom of Information Act request last month. The president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton, joins me now with more. First of all, thank you very much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Good morning, Heather. Thanks for having me. So you're seeking records of all meetings in 2016 between former FBI General Counsel James Baker and the Perkins Coey or Cooey law firm, correct? Well, that's right. There was a specific report that uh, James Baker testified to House investigators that he had an unusual uh, request or a visit with uh, a lawyer for Perkins Coey who happened to represent the Democratic National Committee and Hillary Clinton and hired Fusion GPS and all that led to the Fusion GPS dossier that was used to target Team Trump. And uh, uh, Baker says it was an unusual request and at the meeting uh, he was conveyed documents about the Russia probe and some computer uh, devices that had something to do with Russia hacking, I'm not sure. Uh, now. The law firm says it wasn't about the meeting wasn't about anything having to do with their representation of the DNC and the Clinton campaign. And so, you know, there's a little bit of a mystery as to what was provided, and it raises some questions mm -hmm. about, again, the collaboration between, in an unusual way, the top lawyer for the FBI and the, one of the top lawyers for the Clinton DNC operation. What possible explanation would there uh, be other than that to, to share this information? Look, the FBI general counsel testified under oath it was about Russia. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is on top of the dossier being laundered into the Clinton, uh, into the FBI and the DOJ uh, in numerous ways uh, to, again, that was, it was used by not only the Obama administration, but by the Trump administration on behalf of Mueller to spy on the Trump team through Carter Page. So would Mueller have been aware of all this activity? Oh, I would presume so. I think one of the reasons we're having difficulty finding out about this collusion is because the Mueller special counsel operation has benefited from the collusive efforts between the DNC, the Clinton campaign, Fusion GPS, which by its own admission used Russia intel sources to dig up dirt on Donald Trump, then to share with the FBI and DOJ. And remember, that FISA warrant, that final renewed renewal of a FISA warrant was signed mm -hmm. by Rod Rosenstein in the middle of the Mueller investigation. Why has that still not been released in its entirety, like President Trump had said he was going to do? The president said uh, and uh, that he was convinced to kick it over to the Department mm -hmm. of Justice Inspector General. We're still waiting. It is urgent that the president release this information. Yeah. Uh, those who've looked at the full FISA warrant applications and said that the additional information is even more scandalous than what's already in there. All right. So uh, another scandal brewing. Conservative writer Jerome Corsi, uh, he has hit Bob Mueller with his criminal complaint. He says that the special counsel uh, sought to get false testimony from him. Well, you know, Jerry Corsi thinks that uh, he's been truthful with the special counsel. He's being pressured to say things that aren't true, and, and that's deeply disturbing. Uh, the problem for the special counsel is you have these individuals, individuals like Jerry Corsi get caught up in the investigation, and uh, Jerry says, look, I've, I've been trying to be forthright with him. I haven't, I haven't lied. They found emails that suggest some of my testimony. Uh, however, uh, made mm -hmm. in good faith was not accurate, and they're accusing me of perjury, and it's not the case. Well, he sees you what know, happened with other people. George Papadopoulos. You know what's interesting here? You know, these folks would never be here but for their connections to, to uh, uh, the Trump campaign. In the case of Corsi, it's six degrees of Kevin Bacon, Kevin Bacon <laughs> connection to the Trump yeah. campaign. And, you know, he's called in as a witness, he's trying to cooperate. And then he's allegedly facing jail time. So I don't blame him for yelling about it. Yeah. So what about Comey? We know that he is now set for this closed door hearing on uh, Capitol Hill later this week, Friday specifically, I think. Uh, should the former FBI director be held accountable for exonerating Hillary Clinton before even finishing the investigation? You and I have talked about this before. And what should Republicans ask him? 
Well, they should ask him about that. They should ask him about why they, he told Congress just before the election that there was nothing on the Anthony Weiner laptop before evidently they had reviewed all the emails. They should ask about why and how he took FBI memos he created on uh, Donald Trump from the FBI and then improperly leaked them to the New York Times to get the Mueller appointment going. They should ask him about this uh, this use of uh, the Clinton uh, DNC funded dossier and Peter Strzok and what he was up to, why it is he ran essentially these investigations out of his office mm -hmm. as opposed to the ordinary course where you would have had uh, local offices of the FBI either in New York or elsewhere uh, here in Washington DC run the investigations. You know James Comey's at the center of the storm here and of course you know he's under investigation himself so uh, this is a serious issue for him, and I, I just wish that Congress had questioned him early, er, earlier. But right. you know, the Republicans are about to lose control, so you expect I equal, guess they're doing everything they can. Almost, we're almost out of time, but do you expect equal, equal treatment for James Comey if it is determined that he lied as well from Bob no. Mueller? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I, I think some of these folks are protected, and unless there's a radical change in outlook for the FBI. Uh, I, I, I just want an investigation done. We, I, we're not even sure there's anything being done in terms of investigating these abuses of authority by the FBI and the Justice Department uh, to target the Trump team. Yeah. All right. Tom Fitton, thank you so much for joining us, and we appreciate you and your team staying on top of it. You're welcome. Thank right. you. Well, the oddly never-ending Clinton email controversy takes another turn as federal judge now has ordered an additional fact-finding mission into whether Clinton's use of a private email system was a deliberate effort to thwart the Freedom of Information Act. That judge says that despite previous Clinton email investigations, conservative group Judicial Watch should be permitted to demand documents and additional testimony about the practice. Jillian Turner is live in Washington with more. So Jillian, this is a really interesting turn. One that not a lot of people saw coming either, Harris. So a U.S. District Court judge, Royce Lamberth, has issued a new 11-page order addressing Clinton's use of a private email server when she was the Secretary of State. It includes a blistering critique of the State Department, the Justice Department, and of Clinton herself. The order insists, despite the multiple congressional and FBI investigations already completed, there's still questions that remain unanswered in the eyes of the law. Judge Lambert says the court needs more facts in order to determine whether Clinton set up her private email server for the specific purpose of dodging the Freedom of Information Act. It's known as FOIA. Now, that's a law that allows American citizens to request access to any official government information any time. Lambert writes, the government shouldn't keep information confidential merely because public officials may be embarrassed by disclosure, because errors and failures may be revealed, or because of speculative or abstract fears. This ruling comes in response to a filing by conservative judicial advocacy group Judicial Watch, and it supports their bid to continue seeking access to official documents and even requesting further testimony from the people involved. Referencing the State Department, Judge Lamberth continues, the court takes no pleasure in questioning the intentions of the nation's most august executive departments, but it still remains unknown whether Clinton used a private email server to duck FOIA requests. Judicial Watch has responded to this order enthusiastically, perhaps not surprisingly, saying they'll hope it'll induce state and justice to be more cooperative. President of the group Tom Fitton adds he hopes the agencies will take the judge's criticism to heart. But Harris government insiders here in Washington tell Fox News there's a fat chance that that will happen. <laughs> I bet that was a direct quote. Yes. Uh, Jillian, great to see you. Thank you very much. And you've set me up perfectly for my next guest. The president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton, joins me now. So, Tom, this is a victory for you. And some critics of the former Attorney General Jeff Sessions might even say it's a victory for the Justice Department to force them to do something that maybe they should have done before. What's your thought? You know, one aspect of this ruling is the court didn't just uh, criticize the Obama State Department and Justice Department, but highlighted the problem of this Justice Department continuing to defend the indefensible. Uh, he specifically talked about the chicanery of this Justice Department's mm -hmm. continued defense and excuse making for the misconduct of Hillary Clinton and the State Department and Justice Department previously. Uh, so, uh, and he also talked about not being terribly convinced about uh, Mr. Comey's uh, testimony about the thoroughness 
of uh, his Clinton email investigation, and it shows you the value, frankly, Harris, if we could promote Judicial Watch a little bit, of having an independent group like Judicial Watch focused on this because Congress has dropped the ball here. The mm. Justice Department, frankly, is on the other side of this, even during this administration. And, you know, the courts have been hoodwinked here, to use a phrase that the court uh, highlighted in his decision. And uh, so uh, they're not going to back down. And uh, now some uh, some people like Mrs. Clinton potentially mm -hmm. are going to have to answer additional questions. You know, I am curious about one point because we have found out recently that Ivanka Trump also had her own personal email server with some emails on it. And she has talked substantively about how all of that sits on the White House server or and and that nothing had been deleted. If critics of uh, the Trump administration question about that comparatively to Hillary Clinton and what you're seeking, what is your answer? Well, it frankly just highlights the egregious nature of what Mrs. Clinton did when you compare what happened with Ivanka Trump, uh, where you had some emails about government business being sent on her private account. Uh, before and after her work at the White House, emails by all accounts that were captured and preserved, uh, which is in fact what they probably need to be. Uh, mm. There's no legal prohibition on using personal emails for government business now and again. The, pro the difference here is Hillary Clinton specifically set up an email system to make sure no emails would be captured by the government and provided to investigators as long as she had anything to do with it until, as the court highlighted, Judicial Watch caught them. You know, there is another another difference, too, that I see that I wonder, could your FOIA or could this investigation get to the bottom of? Will we ever know exactly how many and how the emails were destroyed? I mean, we've heard all sorts of stories about this was taken out into the woods and they attacked it and that server was destroyed. I mean, what are the facts that you know so far about that? That's important. It's the deletions. It's that it's that sort of subterfuge accusation. Well, at least half of the emails Hillary Clinton improperly took from the White House were destroyed, about 33,000 of them. As best we can tell, because we've been getting the emails that the FBI has been able either, either, uh, either to recover or otherwise find, the FBI has only been able to find uh, 5,000 of them. So there are, mm. what, uh, 27,000 emails still missing. And uh, highlights the egregious nature, again, of what Mrs. Clinton did, this massive destruction of government records. She had no business taking any of these emails out of the State Department, and she did. And uh, the American people uh, deserve full answers. And frankly, the court, I think, is speaking for millions of Americans and demanding accountability here. And, and I hope the new attorney general is paying attention to decisions like this, because this is what's going on in the Justice Department. They're defending Hillary Clinton while attacking President Trump uh, on, on specious charges. All right. Uh, Judicial Watch, as you said, important work that you were doing. FOIA is something that journalists use all the time. Uh, we'll be watching very closely. Thank you for coming on the program. You're welcome, Harris. Thank you.